because I know that your time is limited. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador Lilo. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, no, from us here in Israel, and good afternoon to everyone there in the Philippines. Thank you for joining us today and for giving us this opportunity to inform the public of the situation on the ground and the embassy's efforts to protect the safety and well-being of Filipinos amid the conflict in southern Israel. We take this opportunity to assure not just our kababayan here in Israel, but also their families there in the Philippines, who we know are anxious to find out how their loved ones are coping in this difficult time. I am joined here today by our embassy officers who have tirelessly worked with me since the hostility started. Uh, may I introduce Consul General Anton Manda, Vice Consul Patricia Naranjos, Vice Consul Terry Bautista, Labor Attaché Rudy Gabasan, Welfare Officer Dina Ponciano, Defense Attaché Ewald Manay, and Commercial Counselor Vice Rory. They will all join me in responding to your questions. As earlier announced by Secretary Manalo this morning, two of our kababayan are killed following the violent attacks of Hamas in southern Israel. These have been confirmed by Israeli authorities. Last night, in the most difficult, difficult phone call in my career, I spoke to the wife of one of the victims to inform her of this sad news and to convey our sympathies. I promised her that the embassy will provide all the necessary assistance she needs. The president will also speak to her today to convey his personal condolences and offer additional assistance. The embassy will not disclose the identities of the deceased in line with the family's request for privacy at this very difficult time. May the memory of our kababayan be a blessing. We continue to work closely with Israeli authorities and local contacts to find the three Filipinos who are still missing. Despite sporadic rocket attacks and the distressing images you see in the news and on social media, these depict only certain areas in Israel, particularly areas surrounding the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military has retaken control of the communities infiltrated by Hamas militants. Rocket attacks have considerably lessened except in southern Israel. People can move freely in areas far from the combat zone, and we have returned to work here at the embassy since Sunday. As much as we would like to immediately extend assistance to our kababayan in conflict areas, the embassy must adhere to the strict travel restrictions enforced by Israeli authorities in these areas. However, the Israeli government assures us that during emergency situations, Israeli security authorities and the Home Front Command have established protocols for evacuating anyone who is in Israel, regardless of nationality and status. The embassy thus takes this opportunity to express its gratitude to Israel for ensuring the safety of Filipinos, especially the Israeli security forces, who rescued our nationals and continue to risk their lives in finding the last missing Filipinos. We also thank the Israeli emergency and medical personnel who took care of our injured kababayan, as well as the kibbutzim who included our nationals in their evacuation operations. Meanwhile, the embassy's migrant workers' office and Overseas Workers Welfare Administration team continues to provide assistance to evacuated Filipinos relocated to safer ground or being treated for injuries. The MWO OWA team has been working tirelessly in the last two days 
to ensure that all Filipinos are accounted for and that those affected are given medical uh, emergency assistance. We continue to provide Filipinos in Israel with timely advisories, safety guidelines, and important instructions through our social media accounts and messenger platforms. We also regularly hold Zoom briefings with Filipino community leaders. While the situation remains tense and fluid, the embassy strives to provide factual and reliable updates and advice on the status of Filipinos in Israel and the situation on the ground. This is our message, and uh, we welcome your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll start with the uh, Nestor Corrales, Philippine Daily Enquirer. Uh, good afternoon, sir, from Manila. With the confirmed killing of two Filipinos, is the embassy not yet recommending the mandatory repatriation or evacuation? What's the question? Uh, with the killing of two Filipinos there in Israel, is the embassy not yet recommending mandatory evacuation or repatriation? Uh, actually, we're not recommending that no? because uh, uh, these fatalities happen during the day of attack. No? And the situation, uh, the, the Israeli defense forces have already uh, regained no? uh, the, the areas uh, uh, attacked by the by the Hamas. No? Uh, they have said that. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I we are not recommending uh, repatriation right now, and uh, I think it's inaccurate to to word it as mandatory repatriation because it, we are not recommending it now. And as the ambassador has mentioned, the uh, the killings happened on day one, and the situation has consider considerably improved since then. May I add to that? Go ahead. The ambassador. The embassy has not recommended it because mandatory repatriation or alert level four is called when the country has broke a uh, breaking down in the uh, rule of law and everything uh, about peace and order has broken down and it's descended to a full war throughout the country. That is not the case in the state of Israel. Uh, the uh, two uh, killings occurred because of the uh, attack last Saturday, and the situation has uh, turned to uh, to a certain uh, semblance of normalcy, as the ambassador and his team have indicated. However, Israel now, uh, by decision of foreign ministry, is under alert level two, meaning re restricted deployment. We're not going to deploy uh, new workers, uh, which is actually the status quo anyway, because uh, we still have to negotiate uh, the uh, agreement about caregivers and about the hotel workers. It's by a G2G agreement, the government to government, and right now there's uh, there's no um, deployment. So uh, we still urge precaution. The embassy already issued a travel advisory. We repeat that, that we do not recommend uh, visits to Israel at the present time. I believe the ambassador will back me up on this, that this is still the continued advice. Uh, no, uh, Although you can, I mean, you can travel to Israel, uh, there are flights, but uh, if you have uh, um, on-site visits, perhaps you could postpone it until after the conflict has subsided. Thank, Thank you. you, Under Secretary De Vega. Uh, Eden Santos from Net25. Uh, good afternoon po, sir. Uh, tatanong ko lang po, ano yung uh, arrangement para doon sa mga uh, kababayan nating nasawi, yung dalawang Filipino po, para maiuwi po sila dito sa Pilipinas? May ganun na po bang uh, pag-uusap or kahilingan yung uh, family ng mga biktima? Go ahead Hello. from the... Embassy in Tel Aviv. Yeah, um, we have received a request for assistance po sa pagpapauwi ng uh, dalawang nasawi at uh, we are still coordinating with uh, 
the authorities po sa pag-retrieve po ng body. Uh, clarification lang po, na sawi po yung dalawa nating kababayan dahil dun sa mga pambobomba, pag-atake, or dahil po na hostage sila? Hindi po sana hostage, ma'am, but uh, uh, na napatay po sila doon sa habang, mga, hab, habang po uh, umaatake po ang terrorist sa kanilang communities po. Sa Gaza po ba yun? Sa Gaza po ba sila Dito na? Po sa, hindi, uh, hindi po. Sa kibbutz po. Kibbutz community ng Israel. Border ng Gaza. Okay. Thank you po. Uh, next question. We're good. Okay, Ivan Mayrina, GM7. Uh, yeah, magandang hapon po. May we get more details, sa uh, sirs, tungkol sa circumstances ng pagkamatay nitong dalawa nating mga kababayan? Yeah, you said they were uh, killed on the day of the attack in kibbutz. Ito, uh, ito ho ba'y nadamay sila nung nag-open fire itong mga Hamas militants or were they uh, hit by, by, a, by a bomb? Hindi ho sila na hostage and then later on murdered? Paano ho kaya ang nangyari? Yung, yung isa ko ay habang pinipwersa ng uh, militante mga terorista yung kanilang pinto. Pagbukas po ng pinto, niratrat po yung uh, mag-ano, yung uh, caregiver at saka yung kanyuhan. Yung isa po ay uh, pinatay pero hindi po namin alam kung anong circumstance. Pero isa po siya dun sa mga natangay ng Hamas uh, sa kasagsagan po ng pananalasan ng mga terorista. So, na-hostage po siya initially and then later on murdered? May I answer that? Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. Yung mga hostages tinadala sa Gaza para maging uh, human shields. May tanong kanina about kung saan yung attacks mo sa Gaza. Let's remember, the Hamas came from Gaza, pumasok sa southern Israel at uh, ito, kumit ang acts of uh, terror and violence. Dahil doon yung first day, maraming namatay kasi either tinamaan yung, yung rockets na ganun, or pinagbabarel. Yun ang most likely nangyari sa isa. Uh, hindi siya kinuang hostage na dinala sa Gaza has been real doon. Yun ang most likely yeah. nangyari po. But out of respect to the wishes of the family, as the ambassadors indicated, uh, we're not going to give details. Uh, perhaps the president will uh, speak about it, but not uh, for now, no po. We're not going to give more details uh, on uh, that other than namatay sila on Saturday. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yusek de, Ve yeah. Yusek de Vega, sir. Uh, yesterday we had a briefing last uh, in the afternoon. Ang nabanggit po ninyo, may seven na unaccounted. What is the number today, sir? In the last 24 hours, baka nagka-development. Yes, I, I, I believe it was seven and then minus two, but let us clarify with the embassy. Ang alam namin is seven missing, pero dalawa... Uh, well, this is now. Is it three or five? Uh, we'll, we'll ask the embassy now. Okay. okay. Um, hello, everyone. I will just give a recap of the figures uh, as of this morning, early morning. Okay, so of the 32 that was reported missing to us, to the embassy, there are two confirmed deaths and... Uh, so, one reported death, but this is subject to confirmation by DNA evidence. And then there are still three missing, and 26 have been rescued so far. So, na update po yung figures, na increase po yung amount na rescued. Thank you. You injured po. Sorry. We're still connected. Uh, yeah. Yep. There is one Sir's... injured person. One and, uh, injured. Recovering po siya ngayon at the hospital. So he's doing well. He underwent surgery and he's fine. As of yesterday, po, two injured. Uh, can we have a clarification on the numbers of the injured? One. One. Isa lang one, 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 uh, one injured. Initially, there were two who were brought to hospital. One uh, of smoke inhalation, the other one of a gunshot wound. Yung pong uh, 
dinala because of smoke inhalation na i-discharge na po. So, isa na lamang po ang nasa ospital na yan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Maricel Halili, TV5. Hi, sir. Magandang hapon po. Sir, we respect the wish of the family not to disclose the identity of the fatalities of the victim. But at least, can we have additional details like lalaki, babae po ba sila, ilang taon ba sila, tagasan po sila dito sa Pilipinas? So I will just give a profile of the two. Okay, so without disclosing any names... Um, okay, so the, the female has been, is 33 years old and six years working here in Israel. And she's from Pangasinan. And she's uh, newly married. But the husband is in the Philippines. And um, the other one is male. He's 42 years old. He comes from Pampanga. And he's, uh, he's married. So that's uh, that's what uh, we will disclose for now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Clarification, lam po uh, to our uh, uh, ambassador or uh, the embassy staff. So aside from the two confirmed fatalities, meron pa hong isa tayong kino confirm uh, through DNA testing. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Uh, thank you, po. Po kayo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Lilo, uh, uh, Ambassador to Israel, Deputy Head of Mission Consul General Anthony Mandap, Vice Consul Patricia Narajos and Terry Bautista, Labor Attaché Rodolfo Gabasan, Defense and Forces Attaché Colonel Ewald. Manai, Commercial Counselor Michael Angela Roaring, and Welfare Officer Dina Ponciano. We wish you well and please keep safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Okay, let's proceed with our briefing here. We have with us uh, the uh, AFP spokesperson, Colonel Aguilar, and we still have Yusek De Vega with us. Uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, I am here to assure everybody that uh, with the guidance of the, our President, His Excellency President uh, Ferdinand Romaldas Marcos Jr., the Armed Forces of the Philippines is prepared to execute evacuation operation should there be a need for that. And we have already, we already came up with a plan on how to do it, and this will be a whole of nation approach because what is important for us is the safety of our uh, countrymen there in the conflict area. Go ahead, Marisol. Sir, clarification. So, paano po yung magiging plano natin? Because yesterday, ang sinasabi po ni na Yusek de Vega, medyo mahirap yung sa repatriation. Kasi kung halimbawa yung magagaling sa Gaza, sarado naman yung border ng Israel. So, ano po yung ibang options? Paano po? Uh, can we show the slide, please? Because uh, we have a plan here. <laughs> okay. We have identified first the temporary safe haven where we can bring our uh, countrymen should there be an escalation of hostility. Aside from that, we also identified airport of embarkation, two airports where we can, where we can consolidate those who will be evacuated. And there will, that, that will be now the mode of transport. We will be using at least two C-130 and one C-295 should uh, this uh, plan be executed. C-295 and C-130 initially. May I? Yes. Uh, we, the, uh, there are no Filipinos asking for a repatriation so far from Israel. Uh, however, we have from Gaza, and the number keeps increasing. I believe yesterday I said there were about 38. According to Ambassador Wilfredo Santos, there are now 70. Mm -hmm. So uh, we haven't repatriated them yet because, as I said yesterday, po, uh, well, nakablakin ang Gaza, uh, tsaka pati yung kanilang borders, both to 
Israel and to Egypt. So now it's a diplomatic approach. Uh, we are using uh, diplomacy along with other uh, countries in order to uh, have uh, the borders open so that we could have human kababayanatin, so we could have our countrymen and women uh, go through the border. And uh, uh, kung kailangan ng evacuation, well, nandiyan, kung hindi commercial flights, the EFP, as announced, will uh, be able to uh, fly them home. If they pass through uh, Egypt border, if they're able to pass through Egypt border or embassy in Cairo, will fly them home on commercial flights. Remember, there are 70. 70, it might increase, no? Uh, these are Filipinas married to Palestinians there in Gaza. Pero sa Israel mismo, no evacuation uh, required yet, but our AFP is ready. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Eden Santos, na 25. Uh, Yusek, uh, yun pong mga kababayan nating uh, Filipina na nag-asawa po ng Palestinian, uh, welcome na mag-repatriate sa Pilipinas. How about po yung kanilang mga Mr. na Palestino? Uh, are they is welcome a, also? Yes. Yes, there is a situation there. Kasi po, uh, restricted nationals yung Palestinians no, sa atin. All, on the other hand, they are married to Filipinas uh, under our laws. And immigration laws pwedeng uh, punta Pilipinas. We, uh, so far, we will not, we have not indicated that we will not allow them to come back. To, to, to enter the Philippines. An issue is, will they be allowed to leave Gaza, either by the local officials or in border, in, either in Egypt or Israel? Kasi mga kababayan natin, we can feel confident that if, for humanitarian reasons, pa, papayagan silang makalis. Kasi hindi naman sila combatants, so hindi sila part of the conflict. So uh, I cannot answer that now, but we are not preventing them from flying home to the Philippines uh, with their wives, if if uh, they're able to, we're able to uh, uh, extract them. Okay, sir, kay Colonel Medel uh, Aguilar po, sir, pakinilaw lang po yung paayong mode of yung transit from kunwari uh, um, Israel or Gaza to Egypt, yung magiging ano po ng C-130 natin at C-295 if in case po na magkaroon na nga ng repatriation? Yes, we will be traveling, we will be sending two aircrafts, a C-130 aircrafts and one C-295. And we have already identified the Adana Sakirpasa Airport, Turkey as the temporary safe haven. From there, we will be shuttling Filipinos who are affected by the conflict uh, with uh, the identification of Haifa Airport and the Tel Aviv Airport in, in uh, and the Ben Gurion Airport. But all of this will only be executed uh, based on the recommendation or uh, instruction coming from other government authorities. Basta kayo po nakaredy lang. Yes, we are ready because uh, that is the primary concern of our president. Okay. Any further questions? I think we're good. Okay. Um, Yusek De Vega, any further updates from you, sir? Yes, the assurance of the embassy, the embassy is not just in Tel Aviv, but also in Amman, which handles Palestine and Cairo, are doing all they can. And it's a whole of government approach, the DMW, uh, the OWA, uh, we heard the AFP and DND uh, and other agencies are in this, all in compliance with instructions of the president. We hope for peace to eventually uh, return to the region. Okay. Thank you very much, Yusek De Vega and uh, Colonel Aguilar from the AFP. Any last words? Uh, let me use this opportunity to also express our condolences to the bereaved family of our two countrymen who died in Israel our deepest sympathies to our Kababayans. Thank you very much, um, gentlemen, and thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Good afternoon.